Welcome to the Telescope Makers Workshop. My name is Francis O'Reilly. I'll be your host as we discuss the making of an optical tube assembly. An optical tube assembly is the tube of the telescope that contains the optics. And we're going to be discussing a 8 inch F6 Newtonian reflector. The telescope will be mounted as a sidewalk telescope and has an 8 inch mirror of a focal length of 48 inches. The mirror was made by myself and we will mount the mirror in the tube as well as mount the diagonal mirror and its spider and the focuser and we'll collimate them. Today is December 21st, 2007, and it's about 9.30 p.m. This tape will be filmed over a number of days, and so you'll see me dressed in different, uh, different attire as time goes on. The tube for the 8-inch the F6 telescope is a 10-inch tube, aluminum tube, of moderately thick wall, medium medium thickness, that has been uh, sold uh, that I purchased from the tube, the telescope tube, is a 10-inch telescope tube, 54 inches long, purchased from Hastings Pipe in Hastings, Nebraska. Hastings Pipe is a firm that sells irrigation pipe, miles and miles of irrigation pipe but they also interestingly have a section that caters to the needs of the amateur telescope maker purchasing very very small quantities. The tube was powder coated on the outside a maroon and on the inside was spray painted ultra flat black. The reason to paint the tube ultra flat black on the inside is to prevent stray light from entering into the optics and impairing the quality of your image. This tube obviously has two ends. One end is straight and that's the end that the optics will be mounted at. The other end has a curled top. It has a hole for the, reflect, uh, for the focuser and this hole was drilled using a hole saw and at the opposite end it has three holes for the mirror mount. <coughs> a little telescope arithmetic first. How do we compute where to put the focuser hole in our tube? I have a 54 inch tube and I want to mount a focus. I have a 54 inch tube and I want to mount the focuser. The first thing I do is I measure an inch from the straight end of the tube where I intend to mount the mirror mount. I then drill three holes because my mirror mount has three sections, uh, three attachment points to the tube. Now I know my mirror is 48 inches, uh, my focal, I know that my focal length is 48 inches. I want to now know how far the mirror is from the end of a tube. I measure the height of the mirror mount, add that to the one inch from the bottom of the tube, and I come up with approximately four and a quarter inches. I want my focus, my focuser to be I want I want my airy disc. I want my airy disc to come approximately one inch out the side of the tube. And I know that the tube is ten inches in diameter. So I have the diameter to get the radius. I have a five inch radius and an extra inch is six inches. Subtract that from the forty eight inches of the tube of the uh, folk subtract that from the forty eight inches of the focal length and add to that 
the distance from the bottom of the tube to the top of the mirror. If you want to get really technical about it, you should also subtract the sagitta of the mirror because what you really need is to be at the lowest point of the mirror. And for an 8-inch F6, that's approximately a quarter inch. I then have the distance in inches that I should go from the end of the tube where the optics are, where the primary mirror is, to the center of the hole that I need to make for the focuser. If you make a mistake, don't re-drill the hole for the focuser. Adjust the mirror mount up or down. I once purchased a used telescope that was originally made by Edmund Scientific. I could never get it in focus. The telescope was in excellent shape. It had never been used. It could never have been focused. I took the mirror out, measured the focal length, and found that it was the mirror was three quarters of an inch too far down the tube for the focuser hold. I moved the mirror up three quarters of an inch up the tube, and I've been using the telescope successfully ever since. You don't have to make another big ugly hole in your telescope, you simply have to adjust where the mirror is. I can then mount my secondary optics, my diagonal, so that the center of the diagonal lines up with the center of the focuser, drill holes in the tube, and assemble everything. That's it in a nutshell, but frankly, in order to do the job right, you have to pay a lot more attention to the details. They say the devil is in the details. A friend of mine also said God is in the details. Certainly we want our telescope to be accurate, to provide a good, clean view of whatever we're looking at without undue spherical or chromatic aberration. And we want to get as much light as possible from that primary mirror up to the eyepiece so that we can inspect the light with the eyepiece and look at the image we're looking at. In order to do that, we have to pay particular attention to the alignment of the optics, the collimation of the telescope. The center of the optical path, that is the path of light from the primary mirror to the secondary mirror and then out the side of the tube, the center of the optical path from the primary mirror to the secondary mirror should coincide with the center of the tube. Now that can provide some interesting problems because very rarely is any tube completely round. Frequently they're slightly out of round, maybe by as much as a sixteenth of an inch. So measurements have to be taken at a number of points just to make sure that you're really close to the center. And adjustments have to be made. What I like to do is I like to, ma to uh, determine the center of the mirror in back, in other words the mirror substrate, and also determine the center of the mirror in the front. And I mark the back and I mark the front of the mirror with a black dot, a very small black dot. When I mark the back of the mirror, I use that to align the center of the mirror with the center of the tube.